Hello, I am Bentham and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. So in the previous episode, um, I built the the moon orbiting science station equipped with reusable moon landers and put it into Kerbin orbit. And what I then did after the end of that episode was I took it to um, moon orbit and I recorded it but I sort of messed up the sound more than I usually do. And, um, and then it was sort of boring and crap anyway so I just deleted it and because there was not that much point in seeing it. It was pretty simple. I went to the moon with the station. Um, but the thing is, what happened was, when, once I arrived there, I didn't have enough fuel left to launch any of the landers. I nearly did, but not quite enough. So what I'm doing today is launching a refueling ship. So it's going to travel to moon orbit, um, rendezvous with the station, and, uh, and dock with it and transfer the fuel over. And then we can... Um, put the fuel into one of the landers and go on down to the moon and we will hopefully have enough fuel for quite a few moon missions, at least three I should say. Um, of course the the annoying thing about transporting fuel around is that you use fuel to move the other fuel so the, there's enough fuel in this to fill an orange tank which we haven't actually researched yet um, but by the time we get there we're not going to have anywhere near as much, we're going to have less than half of that which is a pain, but you just have to deal with it until we can get nuclear engines and be a lot more efficient and so on. And we'll probably need nuclear engines before we can try going to um, Juno and things like that. So that'll take a lot of science. So you can see, there we go, light, nice in the light now, me doing a, a very efficient maneuver there of spinning nearly 360 degrees because I didn't see the maneuver node. Around I go and I start burning. It's pretty simple, that's why you're seeing it all in turbo speed. How's the volume, by the way? Because the noise when you speed things up to four times can get a bit crazy so I'm having to I'll have to do a bit of fiddling after I've finished this recording to make sure it's not drowning me out and, and blowing your ears out and things like that so there we go over to the moon that was quick wasn't it I should use this time warp thing more often so around I go and just, just sort of maneuvering around and I don't know what to say really because I've told you the important stuff and need to rendezvous with the station and things did you see that burn, by the way? In a single burn, I brought the apoapsis, no, the periapsis down precisely to meet the um, the orbit of the station. And then the way I rendezvous with it is I get to the, uh, the rendezvous point, I pass it so that I can see the new one, and then I burn until the rendezvous matches up nicely. So my orbit's still bigger than the orbit of the station, but when I come round, I will, perf I will meet the station, basically, and then I can finish um, bringing my orbit into the station's orbit. So around we go after that nice bit of cinematicness. And here it comes into view. And then everything loads and it goes whizzing by but I slow down just as it's coming alongside us. Within 700 meters. Then flying in pretty fast. I mean pretty fast on here, I can't remember how fast it was in when I was playing. I mean you can see the speed marker if you've got the if you've got HD on. I can't because the preview window doesn't. But whatever. Um so in a moment I'll be handing over to um to to real time commentary Bentham past Bentham who does not yet know what I have said and will say so because I know what he said. Um, and he will take one of the landers down to the moon and we will finally be able to get some science after all this time. So, um, he, you can see, here we go, gently maneuvering this thing in. Textbook docking. Anyway, that's enough of me. So now I will go over to, to past Bentham. Goodbye. And we're back. So, here we are with Moon Lab 1 with the refueler fitted and so what we're going to do now is actually land one of our reusable moon landers on the moon so we'll just um, select this and dump all of the fuel into the main tank on the station and that should hopefully keep us supplied for plenty of time um, it's going to take about a quarter of this tank, well a quarter and a bit of this tank to fill the lander each time so I'd say we've got three flights out of that there at least I think, maybe, I could be wrong, hopefully. Depends on how much we have left at the end. I believe none of the landers have any fuel in them whatsoever, so yeah, we're going to have to 
do a lot of filling up. So this is the one we'll do because I I don't know. Was this the one that we thought had an extra engine in it somehow? I suppose we'll find out when it either explodes or doesn't. So we're filling up this. Maybe I should have done this back in the turbo thing, you know. By the way, I'm recording this before post-commentary Bentham, who has just signed off to me, so God knows what he said. So maybe I'll repeat myself. It'll be fine. By the way, how's my voice sound? Because, um, a couple of, well, like a week ago now, my my throat was a bit meh. And then I thought it had recovered, but I, I feel like I still sound different. So, yeah. I don't know. We nearly got this filled up. I wonder who we will send. Kermore, Edgar, Lengard, or Dudski. I don't think we'll send Dudski because he is our experienced, like, mission commander. He stays on the station doing commandery things, I suppose. Well, and he and he can come along and save the day if anyone gets trapped on the moon. That's a, an interesting point, actually, because I fitted. A docking port at the top and bottom of these landers. I could have one of them pick up the other one um, in a cool rescue mission thing, potentially. But then they'd probably immediately fall over and explode, so yeah. Okay, so we have all the tanks full on this, so we will pick um, Edgar. He has a nice name. Uh, we'll let go. Activate our RCS pack. And then we'll just drift on over here, up a bit, in we come. We have some problems because the ladder is sideways to us. Oh, uh, grab. There we go, and board. Right, we're in our lander. Now before I sit off, I'm just going to do a quick scouting of the moon's surface, see what there is to land. Well, there's that, but that's a bit too soon. Uh, we've already landed in that one, we've landed in this one. Apparently this is the side that we've already landed on everything in. Except we haven't recovered science from this area. But what I think I'll do is do that in another mission when we have all of our scientific equipment and we can get the most out of it. So, um, yeah, we'll go for that crater. That'll be fine. Um, we'll have to go around the moon a, a bit to get to it, but... Whatever. Okay, decouple. And we'll switch over to this. And wait, where's the... He has no face. The face marker is missing. Hi, you in there? Wait, see? Yep, you're in here. You're just not in the corner. Well, that's unsettling, but we'll just have to deal with it. Okay, engage the RCS. Bring us away. Firing the RCS directly into the side of the station, which is a, a highly advisable maneuver. Right, this should. We shouldn't collide with the station again if I just start warping now. It's the thing they do when um, Soyuz craft are leaving the ISS. The ISS reor reorientates itself so that the, I, that the Soyuz leaves going in this direction or this direction. And what that means is that it, it moves into a different orbit slightly because it's slowing down or speeding up on its orbit. A little bit of interesting science knowledge for you there. So we're going to warp around. Actually, what I might do is drop us down into a lower orbit now. And then... Because we want a nice shallow arrival, I think. Yeah, we'll do that. So we'll point retrograde and then we'll check that that's not directly at the station. It isn't, but we'll be flying straight past it, so that'll be interesting. Okay, the engines have not engaged yet. There we go. And off we go. Whee! Dangerous. Right, let's pay attention to... Oops, yep, yeah, I've screwed that up already. <laughs> I was too busy watching the station fly past and I slowed down a bit too much. We'll point that way and then we'll do this. Well, we just want it to be at 10 kilometers. So, there. There we go. And then we will warp round. And then what we will be able to do is slow ourselves down into a 10 kilometer orbital round, and then shortly after, slow ourselves down a bit more so that we actually land in that crater. So, here we go. In. 
slow down here. Already pointing retrograde because we were pointing prograde at the other end to fix the, the screw up. So that's always nice. Slowing ourselves down. 40, 30, 20, and that should be about 10. It's 11 there and 9 there, that's fine. Um, and now we, because we want to land here, so we should slow down, I think just before the periapsis. Right, no, we'll do it on the periapsis, because we don't want to be too shallow, because we might hit a mountain on our way in. So here we go, warping around. Station is miles away now. Oh, we're getting really slow because we've gone under a c under 10 kilometers. That's a shame. It's one of the things with um, orbiting something with no atmosphere. You can orbit really low. The only problem is that it slows down the time warp because... Well, I suppose it's a, it's a method to prevent you from accidentally slamming into planets in time warp and things like that, but... I know, and it's sometimes it can... If you're orbiting, it can be a pain. Okay, we will slow ourselves down and pay a lot of attention to what we're doing this time. So in comes the periapsis, and the moment it starts clipping things around here, we'll... Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so at the moment we'll kind of crash into the other side of the crater. So once we are over the lip of the crater, we'll start thinking about slowing down and things like that. So around we go. Of course, I've done this before, and I will do this many times again. It's quite possible I'll do a bunch of moon landings off-screen. Oh, is that Minmus there? I do believe it is. Yay, Minmus. The thing is, that this is a, an excellent way to harvest science, just going to the moon repeatedly. But let's slow down a bit, because I, it's... Okay, we're still miles away from the crater yet. Let's play the radar altimeter game! Yay! Nothing. Okay. It did looks near. But nope. Here we go. We're sort of facing the ground right now. No, oh, now we're getting close. Yeah, there we go, it's twitching. Okay, let's slow it down. Right, we're two kilometers above the ground, and where are we? We're not yet over the crater. So that's slightly concerning. Because that's... Well, yeah, we're going to miss that ridge, that's fine. Uh, it's gone up again a bit. Let's speed up a little. It's just twitching around there. Oh, oh, down to 2,000. Oh, up again. How are we now? Uh, we're just about to come out over the crater. Oh, right, let's... There we go, switch out of this. Okay, so here is the crater, whatever it is. We should... Like, they have names, we just don't know them because we haven't bothered to find them out, so... Yeah, now we are above it, so... About here, I think, we'll do... We'll start slowing down which is the, the lip of that crater there, so turn ourselves around, let's not waste the RCS doing that because we've got plenty of torque in this and we'll deploy our landing gear, oop, messed that up there's a thing where you need to double tap the gear button the first time you use it and that always that confuses me and then I press it more or less than I need to okay here we go when we pass this lip we're gonna start burning like crazy and go Oh, that was weird. Why did we do that? Why did we flip like that? That's a weird flip to do. Anyway. Ah, uh, slowing down. <clears throat> Pardon me. Slowing down nicely. That wasn't a burp, by the way. That was just my voice breaking, because it does that sometimes. Even though I'm, I should be well past that age. It's because we have two engines on this. Sometimes I only put one of those engines on because it's enough, but when I put two on this because they need to be versatile and all sorts of things will happen to them in their lives. It's easier to mess up when you have one engine. And when you have two, it's easier to fix your mess ups. Are we going to land in this little crater here? It looks like we might land on the lip, actually, which could be a problem. Let me just... Okay, we're not going down quite straight yet, so I will... I'm going to burn this way because I think we'll... We're a bit too late to go on the edge of the lip, so I'm going to push us this way a bit to land in the middle of the crater rather than on the slope. And that should be fine. Okay, right, we've got our trajectory sorted. I'll just burn, we'll just slow down in, in a straight up motion for now. 
Well, I'll just stop now and, and let us drop a little bit. And this should all be fine. Easy does it. Just coming down gently, and now we will correct our sidewards motion. Si sidewards, sideways. We'll put a bit of oomph to it because we are going a little bit fast. Still only at a third. And we've got plenty of time, I think. Yeah, we're fine. I'll slow it right down and then we'll adjust to sort out our sideways movement as is now occurring. Sort of pushing our retrograde marker towards the center. That should be good enough. And it looks like we're decelerating at just the right speed. There's our shadow. It's beautiful, it's a textbook. I'll just go off the throttle a bit so we can keep dropping. And then throttle back up a little bit. Easy does it. And... Look at that. That was beautiful. By the way, there's not much clearance between the landing legs and everything else, but let me get that out of the way so you can see. Yeah, that's... Not very much. So that was something I noticed after I launched, but it's it's good enough. And anyway, that landing was amazing. That's the sort of landing I usually do off camera. <laughs> and when I record, I immediately become terrible. So now we'll do a bunch of science. I wonder if we should... Yeah, we'll, we'll do that in the next episode. So here we are. We have landed on the moon. And next episode, we will do lots of science, return to the station, and harvest all the science. And finally actually get some upgrades, because we haven't done that in a bunch of episodes now, just been messing about for the whole time. So, until then I shall say goodbye, thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time.